Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of No More Future, and this is the new update that Sedge has pushed out. The fixed update, I should add, because he did he did amend it a little bit after it had released. So this is the full up to date version. I can't wait to delve into into more content. I'm really loving George. I can't wait to see how he affects the story and how his relationship with Isaac uh, evolves over time. But anyway, guys. You're here for the content, and of course, my voice, so let's just jump right into it, shall we? Oh. Well, alright then. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, so if you knew me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of No More Future, and today, we've got the new update out, the new fixed update that Sedge just pushed out, so there's gonna be even more content to get through, but anyway guys, please sit back and enjoy the video. Someone asked me, okay. <laughs> sit back and enjoy the video, let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it, shall we? Alright, <clears throat> here we go. Alright. You're telling me you didn't just like... Pull him way over your head and send him flying straight past you onto the floor? I don't think gravity works exactly like that. Who cares about gravity? You're an android! Well, why, if I'd been there, I would have I would have used his own rope to freeze him in place. It would have been sick. And then I would have grabbed his buddies and I would have It only just occurred to you that neither you nor your cousin have played a single round of ping pong since you began talking about yesterday's fight. Though you worried this unwholesome topic might have got him a little too excited. Maybe that's exactly what he needed right now. As you and George continued discussing yesterday's encounter with those crooks, playing a few rounds of ping pong in between, you hardly even realize how fast time goes by. <laughs> yep, sounds about right. You spent the next hour and a half playing ping pong, chatting and catching up. The two of you had a lot of fun together, even while confined to his house. It was far more than you could have hoped for, truly. However, time eventually ran short, as it always does. Are you sure that AI won't freak out again once I step out? Yeah, it shouldn't. Don't worry, I did my tests. It only starts acting up if someone tries to enter. They never programmed it to start asking questions if someone tries to leave. Well, not yet, anyway. But my parents are already hard at work on that, with everything that happened recently. You stare at your cousin melancholically from the patio, once again worrying over what will happen to him once you leave. You're gonna be okay, right? Yeah, of course. I can handle my parents. Kinda. There is a little insecurity in the gazelle's faint, tired smile, but he tries his best to hide it from you nevertheless. You think you're gonna go? You think you're gonna? You think you're gonna be back soon? You gonna come visit? That depends on you. Well, on your parents, anyway. My schedule's more free than ever, but the fact that I can only come in when those two are away kind of limits our options. You finally notice that you're sounding kind of glum as you explain the situation without even meaning to. No wonder George looks so de dejected. You do your best to sound hopeful and encouraging as you continue your train of thought. How about this? You still got my number, right? Yeah, I wrote it down earlier on my phone. Great, just hit me up every time you get an opportunity you think is worth a shot. If I, get, if I got nothing going on that day, I'll do everything I can to be there on the double. You really will? Huh? Not quite, how you, not quite how you expected him to react there, truth be told. Of course! Why do you ask? I don't know, I guess I just... I felt like I could have done better. What do you mean? Inside your head, you immediately jump to the worst possible conclusions. Luckily, it doesn't take long for the shy gazelle to clarify what he really meant. I guess I just... I feel like I kind of acted like an idiot back there. I mean, you came all this way. After doing the impossible and enduring who knows how many hardships along the way, I just somehow managed to make it all about me. Like, who cares that I got grounded or had a fight with a teacher? Who cares about fucking ping-pong in the middle of a conversation? Who cares about... George! You slowly kneel before your cousin as you gently pick up his hand in both of yours. I care. It doesn't matter what you want to talk about. It doesn't matter what problems you're having. Or even if you think they're worth addressing at all. I'm here now. You can talk to me. And you're never going to have to keep this stuff bottled up inside you again. Because those cheeks twitch as he listens to your warm and soothing words. You can, feel him tremble slight. you can feel him tremble lightly as he grips your thumb with both of his hands, seeking more of your comfort. But I should have! No, you shouldn't. You talked about what you felt you talked about what you felt like you had to talk about. You said everything you needed to get off your chest. You don't have to apologize for that. You give his hands an encouraging caress as you try to as you try to widen your digitized smile. We don't have to rush. 
If you want to talk about what happened to me since the hospital, I can tell you all about it next time. I know you're afraid of me leaving you again, but I promise that's not going to happen. Not again. Whoever I am, whatever I am, it doesn't matter. I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere now. We have time. For a few moments, a blissful silence fills the chilly air around you as the two of you gaze into each other's eyes. Your warm gazes meet in spite of the cold tears standing in the way, and for the first time in a long while, you truly feel happy. Until George's head tilts ever so slightly and his expression turns into one of curiosity. Uh, what do you mean with whatever I am? Oh, that. What an idiot. That was probably the most important thing you should have mentioned to him when he first settled down, and you managed to forget everything about it. It'd be laughable if it weren't catastrophic. What are you supposed to do now? You can't just tell your cousin that you may not be who you claim to be after all that. You really shouldn't be promising George things when there's still so much you don't know, as Bradbury proved to you earlier, and yet... It's... complicated. A long story, really. I'll... I'll talk to you about it another time. Gazelle snorts and gently shakes his head as he tightens his grip around your finger. We will. It doesn't take long for George to recover his confidence and good spirits. After some time, you finally let go of his hands with the mutual hope and trust that you'll be holding them again, that you'll be holding them again soon. Well, uh, I know I just said that I would never leave you again, but... It's late, I get it. I kind of kept you here even longer than I should have thanks to my tipper tantrum, huh? Hey, don't make me go through that whole spiel again. Okay, okay, jeez. I won't, I promise. I'll try to liven up from now on. I mean, I got a cool cousin reputation to uphold, don't I? Can't exactly do that when I'm stuck being a sobbing wreck. The only thing that's cool are your ice figures. You're a fucking dork is what you are. I'm not a dork for fuck's sake. I could freeze people and stuff. Cute. You... Ugh! A few more untranslatable sounds come out of the easily flustered gazelle's mouth before he can finally put together a full sentence. Feels easy to tease as ever, right? I'm freezing you next. You chuckle a little more at your cousin's expense before he finally sighs in defeat. At least you, can, at least you can't call me that in front of other people anymore. Hey, it was an accident, and it only happened once. It was embarrassing. It still is. <laughs> well, sorry about that. I promise I'll try to hold back on that next time we meet. I'll hold you to it. Realizing that the time of your departure is near, the gazelle begins waving his hand at you kindly and politely. Seeing this, and having by now exhausted all reasons to delay any further, you slowly begin walking down the steps of the patio and onto the road. Take care, George, and remember to call me if you need anything. Yeah, I... of course. Isaac? You swiftly turn around as you hear George beckon your name once again, a soft smile on his face. You take care too, alright? Yeah, of course. And so you quickly begin heading down the path from whence you came, trusting in your memory to not to lead you astray. As you're about to disappear once again into the auburn woods that lead further down, you take one last look at George's villa, perched atop the hill like a bird's nest on a tree. The young man that followed you with his gaze as you left has already retreated inside, likely busy reliving, reliving your brief but sweet reunion in his mind. You'll probably remember this moment fondly yourself, and everything that comes along with it. The words, the games, the feelings. It's nice to make good memories for once. Oh. The chilly breeze gently caresses your body as you climb down the untamed hill. Though the memory of your time with George is still fresh in your mind, he pays much attention to, you th to the road as your heart allows. After all, as you've already established with your cousin and your handler, the less people see you, the less people see you waltzing around these paths, the better. Along the way, you hear Natalie's gentle voice speak up as you traverse a particularly narrow and calm side road. Looks like it wasn't so bad after all. You've been smiling for quite a while. <laughs> really? I didn't realize. Yep. Had a great time with your cousin? Yeah, I guess I did. The conversation got a little bit bumpy at times. But overall, I think I'm feeling a lot better than I did before I got here. That's wonderful news! I'm glad to hear that, Isaac! <laughs> Thanks, Nats. Gosh, I'm so excited! This could be the beginning of a great new start for you, Isaac! Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Just because one person is willing to overlook the fact that I'm no longer human doesn't mean everyone else will, too. Especially considering the lengths we have to go through just to see each other again from time to time now. Hey, don't get all sad on me now. If you only see the challenges ahead of you, you'll never find the time to be happy over those you've already overcome. You gotta take things one step at a time. Today you reconnected with your cousin, and tomorrow? Well, maybe you'll conquer Earth or something. Ha! Huh. I gotta hand it to you, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I know I can be a little cheesy at times. 
That's why I gotta spice it up from time to time. Keep you on your toes and everything. The two of you laugh together for a brief moment, enjoying each other's company like close friends. As you start climbing down a stony set of stairs that have been partially eroded from time, from, from use, time, and the weather, you hear your helper resume the conversation once again. So, gonna head to your old friend's place now? Oh, right, I'd almost forgotten. With everything that happened, I was already thinking of heading back home and taking a long nap to recover. Poor Nim. I mean, you can still do that. I'm sure your friend would understand if you... Nope, I made a promise. It's too late to back out of it now. Plus, like you said, Nim's my friend. I am looking forward to seeing him again and spending some time with him. I just hope I still have the energy to walk all the way home once we're done playing through every game in his collection. Oh dear, is it really that draining? It's not draining, it's more so intense. I know Nem doesn't look like it, but he can be very com he can be very competitive when he wants to. Ah, I see. Never met anyone like that myself, honestly. Is he fun to hang around? Very. Maybe one day you'll get a chance to experience that yourself. Labrador chuckles at your suggestion, but quickly declines. Nah, I'm not good with video games. Or any kind of game, really. Really? What do you do when you have fun or relax, then? I just read a book or hang out with Mary or something. I have the most fun when I'm learning something new. Huh. I assume school was a breeze for you, then. Pretty much. If Mary hadn't hired me when she did, I might have just gone for a second degree, or a third. Is that so? You never did tell me how the two of you met. Oh, it's a long story. I was... Your friend suddenly pauses as you feel a strange, extraneous thought appear in your mind, like an idea you never thought up. As you try to understand just what it is, in vain, and Natalie immediately jumps to your aid. Speak of the devil, that's your friend. He just sent you a message saying he got off work a couple minutes ago. Uh, did he? Is that... What? What you just felt? Yeah, that's the inbox feature doing its job, notifying you of any new email. I see. I don't recall this ever happening before. That's because I only activated the feature about three hours ago. You already got a handful of calls and messages today, so I figured it was the right time to turn it on and see how you felt about it. Right, that makes sense. So, how was it? What are your thoughts? You think back to the brief experience you had. It lasted only a moment, but you could immediately perceive the, that message as soon as it arrived. It felt a little intrusive, truth be told. You relay your thoughts to the curious Labrador on the other side of the call. I see, so you didn't like it? Not really, no. Plus, I can't imagine what it would feel like to be bombarded by pings like that every other minute. We haven't quite reached that point yet, but... Noted. I can see where you're coming from. Now I'll notify Mary about your thoughts on this feature soon. Still testing new features on me, huh? Just like with Arthur. H hey, we're never, we're never going down that road again, alright? I swear. H here, I'll turn it off now. Better? It's hard to tell the difference, honestly. If, but if the Labrador says she did, you have no reason not to believe her. Either way, yeah, we're slowly testing stuff out to make sure you don't get overwhelmed all at once with new features or senses. I know it can feel like you're a lab rat sometimes, but I assure you that we're doing everything we can to make this as easy and comfortable for you as possible. After all, it's not like we came up with the idea of an automated feedback system for your, ma for your mails and messages for fun and games. Right, you're just trying to improve my life as an android as much as possible, even if you miss your shots more often than you hit them. You feel a little silly for doubting your friend like that, especially over something as trivial as this. Luckily, it doesn't seem like she minds it all that much as she suddenly changes the topic. Anyway, your friend sent you an address alongside his message. He says he's waiting for you there. I see. Where does that address lead? It's an apartment complex on Lakeview Street, uh, Bloomberg. It's on the western edge of the city, yeah, on the rich side. Yeah, precisely. You been there before? I'm just familiar with the name. So, another apartment complex? Seems like it, though I imagine it's not at all like the one you live in. Definitely. How far away from my place is it again? About half an hour. Dear lord, that's gonna be one hell of a walk, alright. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll call you a mover once you're ready to leave. It should only take ten minutes by car. Natalie, those car rides are expensive. It's gonna cost like ten bucks. His Labrador sighs, she reminds you of something you probably shouldn't so easily forget. Don't worry, Isaac. Pandora's gonna pay for it. Oh, I see. Seriously, you have a pretty big monthly budget to cover any expenses, and Pandora already takes care of the rent and refueling. Do you have any... Do you have a spending problem, or...? No, it's nothing like that. I just... I don't know. Ten dollars used to be a lot. Back when I was human, I had, and I had to pay for all my utilities in college. Not to mention college itself. I get you. You still have... You still give money the same value that you did before your transition? That, or I simply can't stomach the fact that I'm using money that isn't mine for things I don't really need. It's hard to say. Oh, don't worry about that. There's plenty more money where that came from, believe me. 
In fact, if you ever need more, just ask. Um, I don't think I'll ever need more than what you guys already... No, really, Mary said to insist. We can just chalk it up to lab expenses in our monthly reports. It's totally cool. I don't think that's anywhere near totally cool. The trek to Nim's place isn't a quiet one, as both you and your aide laugh and argue with each other along the way. Soon, the wild, uh, the wild autumnal forests of Tulip or Peak give way to the familiar urban, jing urban jingle, urban jungle of Bloomberg proper. Ooh, hallway, incredible. <laughs> Some time later, you finally reach your friend's apartment building. The main entrance is open, and the way seems clear, so you decide to forgo formalities and just step inside. You learned, you learned your lesson regarding AIs by now, and the dangers connected to sending the Drake a message through the building's inter intercom are simply too great. However, just to be safe, you send him a sneaky message through your internal phone before you ride the elevator downwards, not wanting him to be wholly unprepared for your arrival. As you reach the door to Nimrin's, to Nimrin's apartment, identical to all the others save for the number impressed on it, you're surprised to find it slightly ajar. Uh, hello? Nim? No answer. There doesn't seem to be anyone in the main atrium beyond the entrance to await you right now. Reaching for the door, you hear someone's voice coming from deeper within the house. How many times do you keep asking me the same questions? I'm not going back there! You recognize the first. The second, on the other hand. Nim, be reasonable. You can't just abandon everything all of a sudden and expect us to not worry. You honestly have no clue about... You honestly have no clue about... It. It's somewhat similar to the dragons, but more feminine and a little more mature. Oh, okay. Alright, so... More feminine and more mature. You never heard it before in your life, though, so you can't be sure... You don't seem to recall Nim mentioning anyone coming to visit him this afternoon, so you're a little stumped as to how to proceed. Nim? It's Isaac. I... Is it fine if I come in? You hear the bickering continue, yet no one deigns to address you. Your first thought is to leave, is to leave and return another time. However, you soon find yourself compelled to stay and check on your friend. Against your better judgment, you decide to step inside and see for yourself just what is going on. Oh, wow, that... Masters of Warriors. <laughs> oh, that sounds like it could be an actual game. Ah, I love his getup. It's so good. Ah, oh, Nim, I love your room. The apartment looks wholly unlike anything you expected. Even though there isn't much in the way of lighting, it's bright, colorful, and full of all of Nim's favorite things from his old place. As you step into the bedroom where the shouting seems to be coming from, you cannot help but be amazed by what you see. There are computers, monitors, consoles, and handhelds, posters on every wall, and so many plushies laying around you could probably build an army. The gamer in his old bedroom was all was always too small to be. Sadly, it seems like the time to enjoy all this amazing stuff will have to wait. Oh! Sister? Two people appear to be arguing in the middle of the room. One is your friend, while the other appears to be a relative, perhaps? Try as you might, you can't say. You never did meet any of them, in spite of how much time you spent at the Drake's place in your youth. Nim, I'm asking you to please be reasonable. This isn't a choice you can make right now. The other dragon's agitation is palpable, but she tries to stay as calm and polite as can be as she speaks to your indign indignated friend. Sorry, but I already made that choice. It's too late for you to try to talk me out of it. Yep, definitely relatives. You're surprised that neither of them noticed you walking in, busy as they are shouting at one another. Because you never told me! I only learned for this from Dad the other day, and you've been here for a month! What were you thinking, hiding this from me for so long? I was going to surprise you later. Surprise me? Have you lost your mind? What made you think that leaving college was a good idea? Not to mention your home! Not to mention our home! You were doing so well, and now you're telling me you threw it all away? For a shitty job at some downtown cafe? Doing so well? Yeah, tell that to my professors! Nim, I'm serious. We're talking about your life here. You can't just... As if awoken from a trance, the petite dragon finally notices you hanging by the door, as is your friend not long after. Though she spends quite some time trying to come to terms with your appearance, eventually the elder dragon makes a few tentative steps towards you. I'm sorry, what in the world is that supposed to be? Before you can properly introduce yourself, your friend suddenly jumps to your rescue. Oh, him? Yeah, uh... That's Isaac. <laughs> you know, my old friend. The lady turns to look at the nonchalant Drake, looking thoroughly skeptical. One, you never mentioned that name to before. Two, that's a robot, Nim. Android. Your voice is calm and subdued, and it doesn't fail to shock the stranger nevertheless. Not a robot. There's a difference. Yeah, uh... Your friend uses this opportunity to sneakily swing by your side and wrap an arm around you. A smile on his face introduces you to the girl. 
Anyway, Isaac, this is you, May. She's my sister, and I told you about her before, yeah, didn't I? I think so. You can't recall any particular instances of that happening. Even if there are, he definitely never told you told you much about her, or his family in general, for that matter. You're quite astounded at how similar the two of them look, especially in spite of Nim's, seek, Nim's recent total makeover. The chance of two siblings sharing the same species is rather low, after all. They're practically two drops of water. Uh, pleasure to meet you. I'm Isaac. Nim's sister slowly shakes her head at your embarrassed greeting, an indecipherable expression on her face. And, and you, mate, this is Isaac. We're old friends and stuff. What is it with you and having awkward introductions with your friend's sisters? Yume doesn't waste time trying to break the silence left in the wake of the Drake's last statement. That doesn't explain why he's a robot or android or whatever. Oh, that. Well, let's just say that a few weeks ago, he kinda... died. As gut-wrenching as to say out loud, you figure it's best to just get that trivia out in the open before the cringe becomes too much to bear. Upon hearing you say that, the woman raises an eyebrow. Wait, so you're the... Synthetic. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, there we go. I'm going to leave it right there. That seems like as good a place as any to take a little break. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Look, we we met Nim's sister. I love it. She's adorable. She looks so much like him. Sparkle Durg. Sparkle Durg S. <laughs> I love it. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a new episode of No More Future. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Go give Sedge some love. He and his crew do some hard work. Bye-bye!